you have a prepaid call from an inmate at Lego, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using. Okay, uh, yeah, I'd just like to, uh, I'd like to say that, uh, there's a lot of things that have happened in life that I shake my head and, uh, you know, I just, I, I don't understand why they happened or, but I thank God that I was on the right side of it. So people really need to pay attention and, and, and just really look, just look at what's going on around them because if you're not careful, you could be here one minute and then the next minute you're not like this, uh, this, this one incident that we're in the county jail and, uh, you know, I was really angry. I was really angry and I was looking for a reason and I was sober this day, but, uh, it was just a normal day and I didn't think nothing of it. And, uh, you know, we're out there and we're, it's right before dinner time, probably about two o'clock out in the Southwest detention center, uh, in Riverside County. Well, uh, we're out there chilling and, uh, some people come back for visit and one of the homies, uh, he had been drinking. You know, he probably went out there to see his family, took a couple took a couple cups down, you know, trying to have a good time, feeling himself. Well, he comes back, and then all of a sudden, these two fools are arguing. They're, they're arguing under the TV, and I'm like, oh, here we go again, probably over the phone or something, because there's always issues over the phone, and it's stupid. But, you know, these fools are arguing. Next thing you know, they go into the cell. Well, this isn't, this isn't even in their cell. This isn't their own cell that they're going into. They just pick a cell that's open, they go into it. Well, they go in there, they do their thing. Well, I guess one of them, he didn't realize it, but he must have been real, like, like really feeling himself because he accidentally, like, went to the bathroom on himself or, or something, I don't know, but he was in there tripping. Well, the homie with the, the, homie with the tank came and, like, hey, uh, you know, look. <laughs> this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. He comes and says, well, hey, look, homie, uh, this just happened, and, you know, we, we knew what had happened, but we didn't know that the fool was tripping. Well, he's in there. He locked himself in this fool's cell, and now he's got his razors out, and he's breaking razors. He's in there tripping, talking about, I'm going to kill this fool. Well, we're like, okay, so we take the homie in our cell. Thankfully, you know, people were in different spots at the time, so when they did count, they didn't notice that he was uh, in the wrong cell. Well, we come out, and we're all on point, you know, because... Uh, you know, we're, we're watching out for, for, I mean, it's one of our own race. It's one of our own rasa, you know. So this fool is acting like nothing. You know, everything's all good. Next thing you know, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to just go ahead and eat. We had fish that night. And I hate fish, but I was hungry, so I was like, man, I'm going to get my tray before something happens. So I go to get my tray. Next thing you know, this fool is on top of this fool on the stairs. And then me, uh, me and a couple of the homies, uh, the homie, uh, you know, Grumpy from Watts and uh, Gangster from Flights and uh, Rascal from Compton and, uh, you know, there's a few of us uh, over there. And, uh, you know, we, we, we gave him a little check out of because dude's tripping and we know he's drinking. Well, we figured that would be it. Well, this fool, he's, he's after that, we gave him a good one too. You know, we're, we're, you know some of us were, were pretty healthy, so, but dude's just tripping. I was like, damn, this, this fool, he's just taking this. So, I'm trying to talk to him, like, hey, relax, fool, I don't know what, what this is all about. Well, he's still ranting. Well, next thing you know, long story short here, a juice container flies across the day room, and that's all I remember. Now, I don't know how I got my hands on this juice container, but I had always heard stories in, in prison. You hear somebody killed this dude with a mop ringer, or you hear somebody killed this fool with a horseshoe, or you hear all kinds of crazy-ass stories. So uh, next thing I know... This fool, we're on this fool again because he's tripping. He's trying to attack somebody else with his damn razor that he hasn't dropped yet. So we're jumping him right there by the stairs, and, uh, you know, the cops are yelling, hey, you know, knock it off. Uh, you know, everybody lock it up. Well, I, I blacked out. I don't know what happened, but I know that the that the homie that I had talked to, for some reason, he switched on me, and he, and he started threatening me. So I'm on this fool, and I see this juice container, so I don't know. I just start hitting him with it. The next thing I know, uh, on the third time I hit him, uh, God forgive me, uh, uh, his head broke, and there was like, it was like a big, like like a like a big gulp. I don't know, I don't know what kind of drink they got out there right now. It's been a long time, but uh, it was like a big gulp, and it snapped me out of it. And I said, "What the hell? What, what did I just do?" And uh, he was just laying there. You know, at first he was moving, but I was angry. I was like, "What? You're gonna do what to me?" 
So I hit him and I just kept hitting him. And the next thing I know, he wasn't moving and his head broke, like something broke and it was like a big cup spill. And there was red and gray stuff everywhere. And I was like, what the? And I was like, and, and, and the cops are, everybody's yelling, it's quiet now. And it was just like madness and now everything's fine. And I looked around and everybody's gone. Everybody had already locked it up. And I looked around, I was like, what the hell? So I went and I said, Man, I was going back to my cell, I said, I better lock it up, you know, so if, so I don't get in trouble, right? Um, I mean, uh, you know, the irony, right? So I was like, man, I better grab my tray. So I grabbed it, and I was like, well, you know what, I'm already in trouble. I, I better grab two trays. So I grab these trays, and I go in, and I sit down and eat, and I was like, what the hell just happened? I was just, it was a normal day. It was a good day. Um, and I don't know how this all came about like this, and I don't know if the guy that got the head broke, if he thought anything about some type of day like this when uh, when he when he woke up that day but what i want to get at with all that is 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 in in these places that we live it's real easy just to wake up and have a hell of a good day think that you know what everything is all good get a little bit loose maybe do a shot you know maybe smoke something maybe drink something whatever you do but if you're not careful just like this fool right here you could go out to visit see your family and you better make sure that you tell them that you love them because when you come back to the pod, you might end up dead. And you know what? I ain't saying none of this to glorify anything. But anybody out there that thinks they're a badass, this fool right here, he was a badass. Yeah, he was Yeah, he was a down homie. I'd give him that. But you know what? He, he made a threat against my life. And, and I pray to God I wish I wouldn't have done it. But there's a lot of people in here like me and a lot worse that will not hesitate to put you down if they think for a second that you're going to ruin what they got going on. And I got two life sentences, and I'm going to tell you right now, I want to live to them. If they're going to keep me in here, I'm going to live until I'm 100. So there's a lot of people in here that do not care. So if you think you're a badass and you got this chip on your shoulder, sometimes it might, it might pay to just pay attention just a little bit because you know what? You could slip and fall. You could take one too many drinks. You could get loose, and guess what? You could have a juice container on your head. So, you know, I, I don't know... I don't know what other to say than that than other than I didn't expect for any of that to happen and I, I wish and I, I pray that it would not have happened. But if you're not careful that's what can happen to you. And that's just one of many stories that, that have happened in here that you just you gotta just harden your heart and just keep pushing, you know, because if it's not you then it's if 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 it's not if if it's gonna be me or him, it is I'm gonna live, you know, because I wanna tell my mother at the end of the day that I love her. Cause I already done made too many mistakes, so I'm not going to go out like that. So, uh, you know, all anybody that's listening, little kids or even even older people, you know, you can you can be 60, 70 years old and still not get it. And it took me into my 30s to finally get it. But I'm telling you, sometimes you need to humble yourself and just maybe listen more than you speak because uh, if you don't, really bad things can happen. And you just be having a good day, maybe just seeing your family. And something really bad can happen. So please pay attention and, uh, you know, maybe it wouldn't hurt to pray a little bit every now and then, too, whoever you pray to. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that was that story. It, it was kind of crazy, man. I caught another life sentence because of that. And, uh, you know, I wish it wouldn't have, but, you know, it, uh, it's times like those that make us into who we are today. So maybe we could, uh, maybe we can express that to other people and with our life experiences, maybe people can get that chip off their shoulder and, you know, maybe come home on their hip or, or, you know, their mom, they, you know, when she's telling you come home because it's Christmas time and they love you, come home to her and tell her that you love her. And just spend one night with them because, you know what, if you're not careful, that one night could be that last night that you drive off a cliff or that somebody does something like that to you. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are a lot better than you out there. So if you want to think you're a badass, you want to come in here with a chip on your shoulder, well, there's always somebody that's, that's welcoming that in here. So, uh yeah, that's about it on that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, is, if, is, that, uh, is that the same story you know, like from, from the newspaper you gave me? Yeah. Yeah, that's that same story right there. And, uh, you know, we were just, uh, when, when, you're in that, when you're in that situation, uh, like I was in, and there's a lot of people that are still in that situation that they're just, you know, I, I chose to give all the, uh, all, all the BS up and try to live for me and my family now, right? And, uh, you know, I, 
didn't care about anything. I never lost no sleep. I don't know what these people say. They had nightmares, this and that. I, I never had none of that. You know, I, don't, I, I wonder why sometimes. You know, maybe it's just, I don't know. I just hope that it's not something that's affected me from over doing everything that we've done and, you know, just seeing what we've seen. But, uh, you know, I, I just... I just wish to God it, and you know, some of this would have never happened, but if anything, at least I can tell people that, look, man, you got to be really careful because there's people out there that are just looking for a reason, and I was looking for a reason just to hurt anybody at that time, and, uh, you know, we did. We all did, and we went in the tank, and we clowned about it, and we did all this and that, and I was like, you you think he's dead? I mean, like, I wasn't, I wasn't being the brightest at that time because I didn't really intend to kill him, but, uh, yeah, I took a life sentence for that. 58 to life, I didn't fight it, you know. And uh, I tried to do the right thing for his family because, uh, you know, I just, it wasn't right what happened. But at the time, you know, the man made a threat towards me and he just got done cutting somebody. So I'll be damned if I'm going to walk away and, let, and turn my back on you when you just made a threat to me and you've proven to me that you're going to do something if I give you a chance. So that's the way, there's people in here that use their head and they think to themselves, well, you know what, I'm <laughs> They're not going to give somebody a chance. There's people that do nothing but think in these places right here. They sit, they put their headphones on, or they turn them, they turn the radio up with their speakers, and they listen to music, and they just sit and they think. And you know, I mean, if people think they can outthink the next man, more power to you. But that's a dangerous game because I've seen some things in here that just really, uh, I maybe I don't know. It's just not right. It's not right, you know. So uh, I wish that. If anybody listens to this, that they would just take this serious and just really... One thing I really regret is when my mother and them would ask me to come home and I'm out there. I've been up for like, I don't know how many days. It's got to be weeks. I wish I would have just went home just like that because it's never too late. If you just stop and think and go and just put everything on hold and do the right thing, just stop. Just go home, do the right thing. You think it's all bad, it's not. Because if I would have went home, I could have... There's a million of times that I can think of right now that I would have changed the way that everything would have worked out if I would have just done the right thing just that one time. But now I got two life sentences and I'm sitting in here praying to God that I get a chance before I'm too old to be able to go out there and live my life. And I came in when I was 23. I'm 40, uh, it's, it's, I'm 42 now, so it, it's been a while, the beginning of 2003. And, uh, you know, I just wish I would have listened what mom would be like. You know, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I don't know if anybody out there listening has uh, been in a situation. You're out there on the run. You think it's all bad. and nah, I can't go home. It's already too late. I've already done too much. Well, you know what? If I would have just went home and, and faced everything that I had to face at the time, I could have saved a whole lot. I could have probably been out by now because it's been almost 20 years. But instead, I, I, t I was stubborn, I took the hard way, and I didn't listen, and uh, you know what, it's, if there's anybody out there, please listen, because there's somebody out there that loves you, and if you go home to them, maybe they're thinking in their right mind, and they'll give you the best advice, and you can change all this. All you got to do is just stop what you're doing and go and do the right thing. Go home, do the right thing, spend some time with the people that love you, and take it from me, man, it's not worth it, because... I mean, yeah, I, I can walk around here and, you know, I can fist fight anybody in this building and I ain't worried about it. But, you know, I'm worried about, I, I'm worried about what's going to happen when I'm done with all this. What's going to happen when, when I die? If there is this God, and I believe there is, but whatever you believe is your business, what's going to happen after that? What's going to happen when I have to face this person? I have to tell him why I killed this fool with a juice container. And I, and I was sober. There's no excuse for that. So... You know, people just need to really pay attention because it's not a... You have 60 seconds remaining. Yeah, it's a joke for a minute, you know, and you're in here and then you get over it and then the next thing you know, you're in the shoe and you're all by yourself. You ain't got nothing. Nobody really cares anymore. Oh, yeah, we worked out and all right. We shot each other a spread. Well, then what? Your family? You lost touch with your family? Maybe your grandma your grandpa just passed. You get that letter. It's all bad, people, so just pay attention and... uh. Just stop what you're doing. It's never too late because uh, it's never too late if you just stop, do the right thing, and just do it right now because if you wait tomorrow, you might end up on the other side of a juice container. So uh, God bless you guys, and uh, uh, I'll be in touch again soon. Bye-bye.